And as you can see, <laughs> like, I want to pay 80, but mm. the stock's at 140. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll simply just avoid the company. Mm -hmm. Of mm -hmm. course, all stocks can fall, but yeah. But because you're purchasing it at a lower price, mm -hmm. um, that stock will fall less than something, I don't know, like, you know, Shopify. I try not to fall in love with the company. Like, yeah. Because <laughs> if you fall in love with the company, you'll pay whatever price. Every investment, mm. there's some sort of issue. Mm. Like Facebook currently, mm -hmm. the, the talk of TikTok taking over. Or whatever, yeah. With Alibaba, it's reg regulatory. In the short run, the stock market's a voting machine. Mm -hmm. So what's popular is going to win in the short run. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, it's a weight Way machine. machine yeah. So yeah. yeah. So what matters most is fundamentals, cash yeah. flow, real earnings. This episode is sponsored by Money Hub, a platform that allows you to see all of your current accounts in one place and also provides you with smart money management tools to help you get right with your money. Welcome back to the takeoff. We have a special guest uh, in the building, a fellow uh, investor here, uh, but he's a, actually a special type of investor. He's um, a value investor. He's also an investing um, educator. So I'm really, really pleased to announce him here today. Wes, how are you doing today, bro? Oh, I'm doing good. Thanks for thanks for asking. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, yeah. No, I've been wanting uh, to get you on the podcast for a while. And we've been having lots of conversations yeah. about investing um, on the gram. Actually, probably more conversations about investing than, than I've had with anybody else, actually. So it's been good. And, and I thought that this would be um, a great um, episode, especially for those people who are interested in investing. So I just want to start with this question first. Um, who, who is Wes? Um, so I am 26 years old mm -hmm. and I was born in Jamaica. Okay. Oh, you're born there? Yeah. I was born oh, right. Okay. So I moved here when I was around six or seven. Okay. And yeah, and I also work in retail. Okay. Like night shift. And, okay. And stuff that I do during my free time, I like to, you know, watch football, mm -hmm. um, invest in. Okay. Um, and simple stuff, really. Okay. Yeah. Who do you support? Um no, I uh, support Man United. Man United, okay. You, you were gonna you were gonna reject them because you're like, nah, they're not good enough. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, okay, cool. Um, can you give us a bit of an insight into the day in life? You gave us a little bit, so that you you know you like football, um, that you are Man United supporter, that you work in retail. Can you give us a bit more of an insight into day in life? Okay, so day in the life. So I normally start by going to work around you know night shift. So I'll start around mm -hmm. four a.m. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll finish my shift and then I'll come home, you know, relax and then I'll go for another shift because I do two four hour okay. shifts. Okay. And so I'll finish my working hours around 4.30 p.m. Then mm -hmm. afterwards, come home, just read my messages, mm -hmm. um, see what's going on in the market, really, mm -hmm. read some news. Then I'll just catch up on some investing videos because I like to, you know, watch a lot of investing videos and... Mm -hmm. Um, apart from that, that's about it really, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Mm. And can, can you give us a bit of an insight into your background? So you said that you were born in Jamaica, moved here, yeah. um, at the age of seven. Yeah. Um, what was that like? What was the adjustment like? Um, the adjustment was, uh, I, I can't remember what it was, but you mm. know, like, um, I was very young. Okay. Like, um, started primary schools it was different from what i grew up mm -hmm. like, in jamaica but i've spent most of my life in england so mm -hmm. yeah it was it was difficult at the beginning but mm. i got used to how what the different thing works yeah what was jamaica like actually compared to like the uk um, like, what would you say the difference um the well, weather of course yeah of course in, yeah <laughs> i mean yeah <laughs> in, Eng in england it will rain one day sunny the next day and <laughs> stuff like that but in jamaica it's nice hot weather mm. the food's nice you know the the environment like everyone's friendly mm -hmm. and stuff like that yeah yeah and you you go back often right um so the last time i went was around two three years ago okay so just before you know covid and yeah i went there for around two and a half weeks so mm. i'm looking to eventually go again in the future okay okay cool yeah yeah jamaica's <laughs> on my list man i think next year we might be going there for the honeymoon so we'll see okay so going back to your origin story so um, so you moved here to to the UK. Mm -hmm. School wise, what were you interested in? Um, so in school, um, let's say in around sixth form, mm -hmm. I studied um, business. Okay. Business studies. So okay. I have that background, you know, and mm -hmm. also studied IT. Okay. 
Um, I've done good in both, you know. Um, mm-hmm. IT, I got a B in business, I got okay. an A. So, wow. Yeah, but I enjoy business studies a lot. Okay, know? okay. Yeah. This is okay. That this is where the investing a, comes from. Then. Yeah, okay. that's yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, and then did you go to university? Um, I I did get an offer, but I couldn't go due to certain circumstances. Okay. Yeah, but um, I did get an offer from University of West London. Okay. Wow. Business management, but mm-hmm. due to certain you know circumstances, I mm-hmm. couldn't go okay yeah cool and um so then did you go down the work route and you just been working ever since yeah ever since that yeah um i just started working really so okay yeah it's just straight to work you know what was the first job at that um point? just retail it's still the same job is it yeah what, what place is it are you allowed to say um yeah sainsbury's oh is it yeah. okay so you've just been there since yeah oh wow okay yeah, so i've just been you know just working constantly yeah getting that money in you know okay yeah. And then, um, at what point were you like, okay, cool, mm-hmm. investing? Where where did investing okay. come in at this point? Okay, so my investing journey started mm. around March two thousand and twenty. Okay, so that was literally when the market. Well, I think I started investing probably a day before the market actually dropped. Okay, wow. So yeah, I started investing. I I always wanted to do it, but you know, my cousin pushed me. Okay, I, I told him I want to get investing like what do you think and he said mm. yeah, just go for it really mm. see what happens mm. and he just gave me some you know little tips and mm. stuff um so i got in the market the first stock that i bought was virgin galactic okay so, really okay yeah, so i bought that for around six dollars a share okay that's that's i think i can't remember what the stock price is now yeah yeah and then yeah. i bought jimmy I know. Okay. I know you bought that because I watched your video. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you watched my video. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I bought. Yeah, I bought so, it at six seven as well. Yeah. I bought that around. Yeah. Around six to seven dollars. Okay. That. Um, I also bought a few other companies. Um, so when the market dropped, mm-hmm. right? Um, I had no clue what to do in the stock market. I was just buying this okay. box because okay. I thought you buy something and it goes up. Yeah. That's, well, that was my mindset. So. Mm-hmm. I bought, you know, some travel stocks that plummeted. So I bought okay. Caribbean Cru- Cruise Line. Yeah, I remember that going, doing yeah. the rounds on social media. Yeah. yeah, so that was, yeah. Yeah, so when that dropped to around $8, I bought that. Okay. Um, I bought um, some airline stocks. So, yeah. Um, I forgot the airline. So I bought EasyJet. I got, I had EasyJet, I think, as well. Yeah. Delta. I got Delta as and well. And there was yeah. another airline, American Airline. I think it was actually American Airline. Yeah. I bought that. Um, I also bought a few other companies, but yeah, that was just the, the small companies that I bought during okay. that time. And, you know, fast forward, I bought some other ones like CRISPR. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I think they're in biotech. Yeah, biotech. Like yeah. Biotech. Um, what else did I buy? I bought a few more companies, but mm. I'm going to say this right now, that's not mm. the way to invest. No. Because that's, yeah. Because what I'm doing is not investing, it's speculating. Yeah. So, you know, I actually made some good money. Okay. So between the time I started investing mm-hmm. till around, let's say, March 2021. Mm-hmm. So I think I made around 55% return when wow. it started going up. Wow. But I was like, this doesn't look right. Like, mm-hmm. I know, like, it's gone up quickly. Others mm. would say, yes, I'm the best investor ever. <laughs> but me, I was like, yeah, something is wrong here, like. I started questioning the way I invested. So mm. even though I was making money, I started questioning. So, you know, I, I stumbled across some other stuff, you know, like I stumbled across Warren Buffett. Yep. Read yep. about him, you know, like not too in depth, just read some brief stuff about mm-hmm. him. Then I stumbled across a YouTube channel. Like mm. it was completely not the way I was investing. It was completely mm-hmm. opposite. So they were doing fundamental analysis. Mm-hmm. So they were looking at the balance sheet, the mm-hmm. cash flow statement, income statement. They were just looking at the company and mm-hmm. see if it's a good investment. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this makes sense to me. So yeah. what I did was I sold every single thing I own. Okay. Um, I did make a few losses. I ended up did uh, even though I made 55% return, I did lose, you know, mm. on some investment like CRISPR. I mm. lost quite a lot on that. But okay. I sold everything and I completely started again. That's okay. when I started learning about value investing. Okay. So what is value investing? All right, I'm going to ask you what do you think it is first <laughs> <laughs> because I know on social media yeah. what people think it is so I'm okay. going to ask you I think mm-hmm. value investing is 
trying to buy or trying to invest in a company at a value that is lower than what it, what people think it's worth. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So yeah. value investing. Yeah. Buying companies for less than it's conservatively worth. Yeah. So you need to apply a margin of safety. Mm-hmm. So if you don't know what margin of safety is. Mm-hmm. It protects you against the future unknown. So yeah. a company, you know, a new competitor might enter mm-hmm. the space. So what you think when you value the company mm-hmm. is that you need growth rates. So if the company yeah. doesn't achieve that growth rate because you know mm-hmm. new compet- competitor, mm-hmm. the margin of safety will re- protect you. So you mm-hmm. still make a decent amount. Mm-hmm. And margin of safety will also protect you against volatility when the market yeah. goes down. So of mm-hmm. course all stocks can fall, but yeah, but because you're purchasing it at a lower price, mm-hmm. um, that stock will fall less than something I don't know, like you know Shopify. Yeah, which Shopify has gone crazy. So, yeah, yeah, that's what margin of safety is. It just protects you against future, future, you know, unknown. That okay, that's out of your control. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. Value investing is not buying low PE stocks. <laughs> it's, not, it's not buying stocks that are growing at 2%. Yeah. It's not buying stocks that pay a dividend. It's simply yeah. looking at businesses, mm-hmm. real business that earn cash flow, real mm-hmm. earnings, and paying a conservative price mm-hmm. below what it's worth. That's it. Yeah. And um, the value investing thing is interesting. I think mm-hmm. uh one a great book on that is um the intelligent investor yeah I find that book is complicated though yeah a lot of I've, I've actually haven't read it yet but oh you haven't a lot of people said it's very very diff- well it's not very difficult but it's difficult it, it is even for like it's just complicated mm. um <clears throat> in terms of because it's not in like straightforward english so yeah. when you read it you're like yeah trying to understand like how he's but he's, he's got his packed full of like good things to yeah. to look for um okay cool so okay so now so now you classify yourself as a, a value investor i would say value investing is just investing in general mm. like you're trying to buy get more value than what something is worth yeah that simple really. yeah 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 and yeah it's it goes back to the premise of what they say right buy low sell high i know i know it's oversimplification yeah. but yeah. that is basically what it is trying to find mm. the deal and I know we'll get to that at some point. Yeah. Uh, if you think right now is better than ever because of what we're calling the bear market, which mm. is everything is just going down. It yeah. doesn't matter. Mm. It's indiscriminate, right? Yeah. Obviously, other things are going down more than others, but everything is down. Yeah. You know. Um. So I wanted to understand because uh, I've been. <clears throat> I really appreciate your posts on um, Instagram. I think yeah. that they're very detailed. I like the process that you go through, and I like the fact that you um you do an analysis on all sorts of companies yeah. you know companies that a lot of people hype companies that people have never heard about mm-hmm. um as well because it, it helps to, it helps people to think about their investments because at the end of the day it should be diversified yeah from, from a perspective so i wanted you to take us through your investing process okay. make it as simple as possible so, for the listeners okay so, uh, so I have a company, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's caught my interest. Mm-hmm. First thing I need to do is look at the fundamentals. Okay. So the fundamentals is, you know, the first thing I like to look at is, I like to see earnings growth. So that's mm-hmm. revenue growth. Mm-hmm. I like to see that over five, five, ten year period. Mm-hmm. I also like to see profit growth. Okay. So I like to see that over five to ten year period. Mm-hmm. I also like to see decreasing shares outstanding or same okay. keeping shares the same okay what does that mean okay so listeners. shares outstanding because <laughs> a lot of people don't know this yeah so when a company wants to grow mm-hmm. they can either do it in two ways mm-hmm. issue shares mm-hmm. or you know take on debt mm-hmm. most companies like you know like the hype companies mm-hmm. or companies that are overpriced mm-hmm. they take advantage by issuing shares which is adding mm-hmm. additional shares to the market mm-hmm. And that's the worst thing for a long-term investor mm-hmm. because it devalues how much your shares are worth. Yeah, you can't physically see it, but it mm-hmm. devalues because you're sharing you're sharing the piece of the pie with more people. Mm-hmm. What you want a company to do is buy back shares yeah. when it's actually cheap, yeah. and that will increase the value of your share. Yeah, and that's what's going to give you good long-term returns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny because like it's like. It's like with inflation, we we argue that inflation is because the money supply yeah. is increased. So it's a similar thing, right? Yeah. The supply of shares have increased. So therefore, yeah. it's like devaluing mm. in a way. So yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. And then at that stage where you're like, okay, cool. Like okay, these are, it's ticking all the boxes. What what happens next at right, that point? So 
I'm going to continue. So, Shea's outstanding. Um, mm. And then I like to look at the depth. So, I want them to have low depth. Because, okay. you know, if a company has low depth, then mm-hmm. it's hard for them to go bankrupt. Yeah. Um, Especially in this economy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's crazy with all these prices, man. Like, yeah. I'm seeing so many, like, places just shut down. Yeah, Pubs, yeah. restaurants. And yeah. You know, even retail stores saying this is the last time we're going to be open. Mm. These things do have an impact and they come out of nowhere. You can never, yeah. you can try your best to plan for it. But, you know, like you said, if if it's, if it's you have low debt, then you're kind of, if that does happen, then you're like, okay, cool. Mm. Maybe I won't go back because I don't have to repay somebody. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, okay cool. Then I move on to the cash flow statement. Mm. So this is the most valuable part for a company because mm-hmm. the cash flow mm-hmm. is what gives you value as a shareholder. Yeah. So what the cash flow, I like to see increasing cash flow. Mm-hmm. So the cash flow can be used to repurchase shares, yep. decreasing the shares outstanding, mm-hmm. can be used to pay a dividend, mm-hmm. can be used to reinvest into themselves or the yep. company, mm-hmm. uh, make acquisitions. Mm-hmm. And I think that's about it. So okay. I like to see that increasing over time. Yeah, And I also like to see a high high profit margin. So let's say around mm-hmm. 10%. Mm-hmm. And I also like to see a high return on invested capital. So okay. return on invested capital mm-hmm. is, you know, um, how good management is at allocating capital for okay. future profit um, growth. Mm-hmm. So I like to see that around 10%. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to tick. So you get all this. It mm-hmm. doesn't have to tick the box. It just tells me mm-hmm. where the business is currently at. Okay. So when I find a company that I'm happy with fundamentally, mm-hmm. I then have to find out how much to pay for it okay because you know yeah every- and this is what i was gonna go to <laughs> next yeah no company is worth an infinite amount yeah i don't care if you're apple microsoft mm-hmm. you're not worth an infinite amount you mm-hmm. want the a perceived value yeah so i didn't have to value the company mm-hmm. so what i do is call a discount cash flow analysis yeah yeah so what i do is let's start with the growth rate so mm-hmm. i like to take analyst estimation okay or if I can find what the company's guidance is, mm-hmm. I'll look at that as well. But okay. I look at analysts' estimation, then mm-hmm. I'll take it. So if, com- if the analysts say um, Apple's going to grow 15% yeah. a year, mm-hmm. for example, um, I like to go a little bit lower because okay. analysts, you know, they're not always right, of course. They're not, no. So And um, they manipulate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Honestly, this game is <laughs> is rigged, man. But yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in another yeah, episode. So let's see. Yeah. They say Apple's going to grow mm. 15%. Uh, mm-hmm. I will say, I'll put that in my cash flow, you know, mm. spreadsheet. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's say in the next, between now and five years time, I'm mm-hmm. going to say they're going to grow 13%. Yeah. And then between five and 10 years time, they're going to yeah. grow 10%. Okay. It's important to be conservative with your analysis because mm-hmm. you, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. So yeah. when you're conservative, you're building that margin of safety, mm-hmm. which means more room for error yeah. where you can still make money. Yeah. So plug in my growth rate, um, 13 and 10%. Mm-hmm. Then I would put, you know, um, the PE ratio I like mm-hmm. to use. So what the PE ratio is for an established company is mm-hmm. between 15 and 16 times earnings. Okay. So I like to be conservative and use 15 for most companies. Okay. But I do, you know, give 16 for companies that have strong moats. Okay. So I'll probably give Apple 16. Okay. I'm What's a moat for people that don't know? A moat yeah. is basically what makes the business strong like mm. like apple like who mm. doesn't know apple like, yes that's true if, yeah. if you if a company try and copies apple they're mm. not gonna do it no, no so you want those kind saying. of companies mm-hmm. that's really hard hard to copy okay so yeah go, I, I put i'll put a 16 p for apple because it's mm-hmm. a strong mold good mm-hmm. brand and it's growing at a decent rate yeah um then i'll put how many shares it has currently on okay. the market and then I'll put its depth, so how much it has in depth mm-hmm. and how much it has in cash. Mm-hmm. And then um, and then it should give me how much I should pay for the company. Okay. So it will give me, so also I need to put my return, how much mm-hmm. returns I want. That's mm-hmm. another thing. So I use a 15% return. Okay. Like each value investor has a different one. Like 15 okay. Is not a so much. how much you want the return on your investment that you exactly. want every year so you want to your aim is to get 15 percent on yep. your money every year yeah okay. on that investment so okay. I, use it, I use that 15 percent for every single company okay so some people they use 10 percent, which is around fair value mm-hmm. like my friend uses that mm-hmm. um some people use 12.5 mm-hmm. how much 
you know mm-hmm. risk you know you want to like look how much risk you want to take on yeah but the higher the returns mm-hmm. you know the, the the less risky risk you're gonna take so yeah it will give me when i do all that stuff it will mm-hmm. give me how much i need to pay okay so let's say it gives me i need to pay 80 dollars a share for apple right yeah what I'd, and the stock's probably around 140 right now. I think that's so, yeah. I haven't guessing. looked at the market in a while. And as you can see, <laughs> like, I want to pay 80, but mm. the stock's at 140. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll simply just avoid the company mm-hmm. completely. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think about it. Like, I know some people, they'll see that and be like, I'm going to miss it. Apple's going to go up forever. Mm-hmm. Like, they could start getting FOMO. Mm-hmm. Then they do a really stupid thing and they'll pay the current price, mm-hmm. which is dangerous because... <laughs> There's no margin of safety mm-hmm. and there's the risk of permanent capital loss. Yeah. So what I do is I'll just add it to my watch list, set mm-hmm. an alert of $80, mm-hmm. then move on to the next company and do okay. that. I could probably get through around, I don't know, 20 companies. Wow, in a day. Well, not in a day, but you know. like Okay, just yeah, generally. Just because just I like just screening new companies and okay. potential investments. As you can. Yeah, yeah okay, so yeah. Okay. I could even get through fifty companies where there's there's not one buy. So Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I'm really like disciplined with what I buy because Wow. That's I, good. Yeah. I try not to fall in love with the company. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you fall in love with the company you'll pay whatever price. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you just make your decision based on price, if it makes sense? So like what it's telling me to buy. Yeah. So like if if Apple, for example, you said you wanted 80, but Apple's at 60. Mm-hmm. Would it be like, yes, I'm buying it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So is it is it more, so are you more numbers focused, like militant on the numbers? Um. So. Obviously uh, you've done your fundamental analysis. Yeah. So after that, said, yeah. I would obviously research the company, like yeah. what it does, okay. how it makes money. Okay. But what, so if I wanted to pay $80 for the stock, yeah. and the stock's actually dropped to like 60. Mm-hmm. That's good for me because mm. I'll probably load the boat, honestly. Okay. Yeah. Cause You're seeing it as like, yeah, okay, the market might be mispricing it. Yeah. But luckily, so, yeah. Okay. And I would not care if Apple goes to $10, $5. <laughs> yeah. I'll just keep buying as long as yeah. my thesis hasn't changed. Or, okay. And as long as the fundamentals hasn't changed. Okay. Because the way I value the company, it's not me picking an absolute bottom. Mm. Like, no one can pick the bottom. Yeah, yeah. It's valuing the company conservatively conservatively mm-hmm. and whatever price it gives me, that's yeah. my my buy price. And okay. if it, and the stock can go fifty percent lower, yeah. I have to keep buying like as long as the fundamentals and the thesis and the change, I keep mm-hmm. buying and just building my position and I'll be getting a lower average, mm-hmm. but my upside potential will be huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And an example of this is Alibaba. Yeah. We've been talking about Alibaba for <laughs> yeah. a while, Alibaba, right? Alibaba, yeah. Alibaba is killing us right now. It's like, it's just a geopolitical thing, mm. you know. Um, I'll, I'll kind of classify myself as a new investor. I've been doing it for like yeah. five years. I only started investing in stocks, mm-hmm. individual stocks in 2020 as well. Yeah. Before that, I was in index funds and ETFs. Yeah. And um, I guess for us, to be fair, this is a unique time we're in. Yeah. Uh, in if you think about any period, I mean, we've just gone through. We're still going through a pandemic. Yeah. Then we ha- we, then we've got a war. Of course, those things have happened, but they're so close together. Mm. And then China and US have problems, and there's just lots of stuff going on. So yeah. So with Alibaba, for example, that stock is getting hammered. Not only that, yeah. obviously, all of them are getting mm-hmm. hammered, and there's all this negative sentiment around them how how do you how are you navigating that um so i first bought alibaba around 210 dollars a share yeah so and it's currently around 95 dollars a share mm, so yeah yeah that's a big drop mm. so when i valued the company i valued that i need to pay 210 dollars mm. but obviously it kept on getting lower so mm. my thesis hasn't changed since mm-hmm. 210 dollars it's just that a lot of you know, investors, they're mm. scared with all the whole China thing. Mm-hmm. They're scared of delisting. They're scared of, you know, mm-hmm. regulatory issues. But I'm fine, really, because I own three Chinese companies. Mm-hmm. So I own Alibaba, mm-hmm. JD, mm-hmm. and Tencent. Okay. Yeah, they're basically the three most dominant companies in China. So yeah. I'm calm. Like, I haven't mm. lost any sleep over the yeah. investment. Yeah. Like, I know, like, one day, like, the, the true value of these companies will be seen so yeah yeah alibaba is large portion of my portfolio same with jd and same with tencent so mm-hmm. 
yeah, I'm fine, really. Like, it's calm for me. Yeah, yeah. What What's your general general thoughts about, you know, investing in Chinese companies right now? You say you're not worried, but generally, hmm. do you think that there is an element of a, of a risk with it? I know delisting, I don't believe that delisting is going to happen hmm. either. Um, but we don't know, right? Yeah. So are you, I know you say you don't lose any sleep. Are you just like, nah, this, yeah. this is my plan. Yeah. This is what the numbers are saying, mm. whatever it is. Yeah, like, it's not just seeing what the numbers are saying. It's just, mm. you know, like, logic, really. I mean, mm. like, when you buy an investment, you know, mm. and you need to buy it cheap, you're not going to mm. buy it when it's all sunshine and rainbows. Yeah, like, that's true. So with every, yeah, in true. every investment, mm. there's some sort of issue. Mm. Like Facebook currently, mm-hmm. the, the talk of TikTok taking over. Whatever. Yeah. With Alibaba's reg- regulatory. So let's get yeah. with that. I mean, regulation is not new. Like yeah. the EU and and Congress, they've been trying to break, break up Facebook and Google for ages. Mm. They've been even slapping them with fine. But mm. the fine is like nothing to compare to what they earn so mm. regulation eventually like congress and the eu mm-hmm. they'll just get fed up because it's these these fines they're not doing anything to these companies yeah what they're trying to do is make them where they're not so big they're mm-hmm. literally a monopoly so mm-hmm. that's the same with chinese companies like yeah. they just want an even playing field in china where yeah. these companies don't get too big and they literally eat away competition they just want fair competition for mm-hmm. all and stuff like that because with jd mm-hmm. like they're a chinese company they're not facing any scrutiny from from the government at yeah. all yeah they're, they're so small but it's mainly alibaba yeah and that's because he, he the former ceo yeah. talked too much yeah <laughs> yeah that's why as soon as he did, said that <laughs> yeah. they just had problems yeah. right yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> it's actually quite funny like a lot yeah i think a lot of people get mm-hmm. um scared of that um what are your thoughts on you know like some you mentioned facebook facebook has created netflix has created Mm -hmm. facebook has created because of uh, the growth rate right i think the growth slowed right are you worried about that as well you're invested in them aren't you yeah yeah i'm not worried about it i know a lot of like growth you know people like Mm. they're upset that it's not going to grow 40 percent a year but yeah growth doesn't matter as long as you're paying less than that because with facebook right Mm. they literally have almost the whole population on that platform (laughs) using one of their own platforms so how much do people expect them to grow yeah so the growth rate slowing down is not an issue for me because when i valued it i valued it at what they say they so i think facebook can grow 15 percent at least Mm. So I valued it around, they're going to grow around 9%. So mm-hmm. if Facebook say we're going to grow 10%, I'm not worried because um, I know my margin of safety will help me where mm-hmm. I won't lose much or yeah. I'll probably just earn a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. like probably 10%, 9%. Yeah. And I'll be happy with that, to be honest. So That's I'm, good. That's I'm not good, really yeah. too concerned about the growth rate. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, it's the whole metaverse thing, like how much they're going to spend yeah. and stuff like that. But That is definitely a mm. concern, yeah. yeah. I'm not invested in Facebook. I used to be. It's weird. I, I think I sold out of them for Microsoft and I sold out of Microsoft. I can't remember what was yeah. going on with me at that point. I was just <laughs> yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Like I was just in and out. I was just yeah. like, yeah. I think I would look mm. back at them when I start investing again mm. because they have created, like it's so bad. Like mm. didn't they lose like, did they lose like 400 billion valuation yeah, value in a like lot. a day or two days or something yeah. crazy, which is not normal. No. You know, so. Big overreaction. For me. Yeah. But like, it's like, you always wonder like, who is doing that? They try and blame retail, but I think they always use us. But can we really move a, a company by 400 billion in a day? Or is it the institutions mm. scaring people? I think it's just a mixture of everything. Really. Yeah. Like a lot of institution, like, they obviously sell mm. and that causes, you know, domino effect. Retail yeah. will sell as well. Yeah. And it's just constant fear. Yeah. And when there's fear, that's when you should be buying as long as yeah. it's, it's, it sounds logical. Because yeah. when Facebook came out with that in the after hours, mm. I was like to my group chat, Facebook's down like 30%. And I started that celebrating because, you yeah. know, I said, because I initially started at 310. Mm-hmm. I said if Facebook dropped to, you know, 250 at least, mm-hmm. I'd probably load the boat. 
mm-hmm. and that's what it did during the yeah. after hours. So I started just buying, 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 and it's wow. a decent part of my portfolio. Wow. So yeah. Okay. Wow, that's so cool. Um, can you take me through? Take me through one of your favorite company <laughs> right now. Yeah, your favorite company <laughs> at the moment. I think it might it's investing. Yeah, I like Alibaba, but I also like Tencent. Okay. Yeah, that's another Chinese company. Um, tell, tell us why Tencent. So Tencent, they're this huge company. Yeah. Like, they're the biggest gaming company in the world. Gaming? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that they were in game. Yeah, so wow. they're the biggest gaming company in the world. They have the biggest bar Facebook platform. They have the biggest social media platform in the world, Wow. which is WeChat. Okay, yeah, I've heard of WeChat, yeah. yeah. So it's fully, you know, in Chinese civilization mm-hmm. where literally you like if you want to book a, a cab you have to mm. use wechat if you want to wow. book a doctor's appointment you have to use wechat that's wow. how powerful that platform is and it's still growing wow they also have this investment portfolio that's really valuable to them mm. where they invest in companies so some good companies that they invest in they have stake in tesla mm-hmm. they have stake in activision blizzard okay really oh wow yeah so they are staking like monzo as well oh Wow. So they have this huge portfolio of companies mm-hmm. they invested in and I think they've yielded around 30, 40 percent in like wow. in like last 15, 20 years. That's crazy. Yeah, so yeah, and it's led by the CEO of Pony Ma, which is probably the best capital capital allocator beside Buffett. So okay. I like Tencent. Like they're just more than just a gaming company. They've got this fi- fintech arm as well mm-hmm. we chat investment portfolio they're literally mm-hmm. involving everything, everything yeah so, diversified income yes yeah, so, yeah okay yeah. wow they're just a phenomenal company i could talk about them all day i just wow like them a lot wow that's crazy yeah. that's crazy is that tencent yeah yeah i've heard i've heard of tencent i never knew every time i check them on trading 212 it just says tencent music yeah so that's a part of them as that's well. a part of them that's their music platform oh, okay so they're publicly separate yeah so they spun that off okay yeah, they, they spun were that to, off. yeah they were forced to <laughs> they were forced to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh my god that's crazy yeah um what what platform are you using um, trading platform? 212 okay you, are they on trading 212 yeah, they're in the okay ISO, oh the um yeah. the non-iso is it they're in the iso they're in the iso as well yeah. okay yeah. Oh, okay that's what one do you use trading 212 as well yeah, yeah so yeah, you yeah. can probably get them yeah okay i need to i need to have a look at them yeah, yeah i use trading 212 i've got free trade as well i haven't mm. really got much on free trade just like free shares and yeah that's it as well um have you looked to to move to any other platforms or um no not not right now just yeah with trading 212 okay in the meantime yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's to be fair it's, it's quite cheap yeah and it's you know how I got onto Trading Two One Two, and I mm. think the rest of the other platforms were missing a trick. The reason why was because mm. I always was interested in investing in US yeah. companies, Same. and everyone else didn't seem to have it at the time. Yeah. This was like even before the pandemic. I was I remember searching for it, and the only um, investment platform that I could find at the time was Hargreaves Lansdowne, and they were charging dumb amounts of money, like yeah. fifteen pound. I was like, yeah. I only want to put in a hundred. Exactly. So what's the point? Like fifteen, I was like, I'm not going to do that. Mm. Leave it. And then trading two one two came. I know they're not completely free, but mm. they kind of just changed the game. I think, and all these other platforms aren't you yeah. know trying to play catch up. So yeah, no, it's been crazy. What if I told you that there was a platform that allows you to see how you're spending? all of your money across all of your accounts especially at a time where the cost of living is at its highest that it's been in years what if i also told you that this platform also allows you to see how much income you are getting every month across all of your accounts as well as helping you to set budgets for all of your expenses it doesn't stop there though this platform also helps you to send a record of your rent payments to experian so that it is recorded on your credit report which can help to boost your credit score this platform sounds amazing right well this platform is called money hub which you can download for free by tapping the link in my description. You get access to premium features free for six months, six whole months with no auto renew. And then if you decide that you love the app and the platform and you want to continue with premium features, 
then it will only cost you £1.49 per month. That is the deal of the century, right? Well, go and download the Money Hub app right now. So yeah, I wanted to ask you, um, how are you dealing with the stock market going down? Other people are panicking, yeah. throwing fires in their portfolio, <laughs> they're selling everything, I'm out of the market, like, I'm done. Yeah. Um, how are you dealing with it? So unfortunately, my portfolio is not down quite a lot. Okay. So year to date, my performance mm -hmm. is 3% down. Okay, that's good. Compared to the market, which is about 12, 13% down. Okay. So I'm That's doing good. good. So I'm not feeling it, but yeah. well, obviously when I look at the S and P and it's, mm. it's going down and I see all the stocks going down, I'm fine really because if I'm going to invest the way I invest in, like I have to like the red days, like mm -hmm. these days because the more people overreact, yeah. the more chances there's bargains for me to find. Mm -hmm. So I, I like this kind of market. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people they they're panicking. You know, they going at the market but i think that people are just overreacting because yeah during the last few years i mean i'll say the last decade we've been blessed with this amazing bull run mm -hmm. so yeah like you didn't you can invest in, in really bad companies and mm -hmm. it'll just go up mm -hmm. so i think within the last few years especially during the march you know 2020 mm -hmm. a lot of investors have taken on too much risk yeah so they've been Agreed. investing in SPACs Mm -hmm. non-profitable company yeah i invested in facts yeah gosh i made some mistakes yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. high evaluated company yeah and yeah. when the, the bear market comes that's mm -hmm. when you see them drop 60 70 yeah percent. crazy percents yeah and the thing is on my page i've been saying when i value these companies that mm. they're crazy overvalued like mm. i'm not gonna touch it mm. so one is paypal mm -hmm. oh yeah paypal yeah, yeah so they're I actually own them so mm. Uh, they were trading at two hundred dollars. I said I'm okay. not. I'm not willing to pay anything under a hundred. Mm. A lot of people were saying, "Nope, you've missed the boat. It's gonna go up." <laughs> and three months later, the stock's literally below hundred. So really, yeah, I was not expecting oh it to fall God. quickly. So even Shopify, I valued them as well. Yeah, I valued them when they were trading at a thousand. I actually think they're worth a hundred. So mm. and they're currently at three hundred. So <laughs> wow. yeah, a lot of people were saying. Like, you know, it's not going to go down. And the yeah. thing is, people don't believe stocks can go down. Like, mm. they can go up crazy, crazy. They mm. can also drop crazy. So, yeah, yeah, that's the thing people need to keep in their mind. Like, yeah. stocks can fall and they will mm -hmm. fall aggressively. Yeah, yeah. What's your strategy for this period? For this market? Yeah, yeah, right now, yeah. Same as always, really. Same as always, buy lower. Just look for deals. You <laughs> yeah. Are you finding more deals? Okay, then? so... Yes, I'm finding more deals, but it's not, you know, crazy deals where okay. I can throw, like... Yeah. large portion but i've found recently i bought paypal of course okay yeah you said yeah um, value that low. um i also bought nintendo okay nintendo's trading yeah. why have i never seen it come up okay it's really low-key like yeah it's really low-key yeah. yeah um i um i bought nintendo mm. i bought um what else did i buy i also bought um a company today actually it's like mm. small position um i bought um warner bros media Warner Bros. Yeah, That's so they got spun off by AT and T. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I bought so some interesting deals, but it's not, you know, crazy deals. You okay. Know? But there's some good ones out there. Okay. Wow. Mm. That's cool. How important would you say mindset is in the stock market generally? Very important. Yeah. Very important. I think you need to have the mindset. You know, like you're buying a real company mm -hmm. that's producing cash flow. Mm -hmm. Like you need to treat companies as real business is not something that bounces up and down <laughs> um, yeah stop looking yeah. at your um your charts every day yeah actually on that front we didn't mention it but what do you think of technical analysis um technical analysis yeah i don't really have any like opinion on it i do yeah. um my friends do technical analysis okay. so i do look at it but i don't really have any like okay. strong opinion on it to be okay. honest okay. okay yeah um what would you say are some of the risks of investing and yeah risk so yeah. um so what do you think risk is <laughs> risk is you know what i i watched a guy the other day i don't know if you know him carson carson okay. <sighs> investing with carson i'll show you off, i'll show you offline after the episode is it that tech investor kid no no he's not a tech investor he started off like would I say he's a value okay. investor? He might have started off as a value okay. investor and now he's got like another 
portfolio. But he he mentioned risk for me, right? Joseph <laughs> Carlson. Yes. Yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I watched a video he's that he did about him. risk. Yeah, he's not a value investor. Huh? He's not a value. Investor. And you don't think? Okay, well, we, can, we can debate <laughs> that. Out. We can debate that off. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um. So risk. <sighs> how do I? How would I describe risk? Hmm. Mm. There's so many ways. Yeah. Like I could say. I could say diversification, but then you could say diversifying bad companies mm. means that your risk is going to be high, right? Yeah. I I would relate it to the re- potentially to the return, yeah, exactly. that that you, that you get, yeah, 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 yeah. So risk for me is below par returns, mm. the potential of permanent capital loss. Yeah, that's risk to me. Yeah. So yeah, if I can't find an investment where mm-hmm. where I'm getting a satisfactory result, mm-hmm. then there's a risk of permanent capital loss. So. Okay you think for me something like tesla that's yeah. risky to me yeah 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 tesla is crazy a lot of people are um are invested in that do you think that you know you you think i know i saw your valuation i can't remember what you mm. valued that at, but you think that there's a high chance that it's going to come cratering at some point um it's not me thinking it's just yeah. going by history yeah like the most euphoric stock mm-hmm. like they go up where fundamentals far ahead of the business mm-hmm they will come back down somehow. Like, yeah. it's not going to go up. It mm. will come down somehow. Like, yeah. I can't tell you when, mm-hmm. but it, it's going to come down to an appropriate valuation. Yeah. Because you have to think of it. This is a quote from Ben Graham. Like, mm. in the short run, the stock market's a voting machine. Mm-hmm. So what's popular is going to win in the short run. Mm-hmm. But in the long run, it's a weight machine. machine. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So what matters most is fundamentals, cash yeah. flow, real earnings, and yeah. stuff like that. That will matter. Yeah. yeah. When it's when the going gets tough, like right now, where it's cutthroat. Yeah. Everybody wants to see how much you're yeah. you're making. So when I valued Tesla, I think I valued it around eighty, ninety dollars. Okay. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's what is not, it at now? Six hundred. Yeah. So that's not me saying it's gonna fall eighty nine dollars tomorrow or next yeah. week. That's what I'm willing to pay to get my okay. returns. But okay. If it doesn't fall there, I don't think I'll probably invest in comp- Tesla ever. But mm. if it does, then you're going to get good returns. But, you know, a lot of people, they're buying at this current price. And, mm. and I think they've put themselves in big trouble. Yeah, okay. A lot of people have their whole portfolio in it. <laughs> yeah, they I know. I've seen some people yeah, whole portfolio in the Tesla. It's yeah, crazy. And it just reminds me, like, from stuff that I've read, like Cisco, mm. you know, where if you didn't own Cisco in 2000, mm. like he was looked upon as like, well, what is going on? Like, so I think there's just too much euphoria with Tesla. Like, yeah. I don't think it's a bad company with what yeah. they've done. They've yeah. converted the whole EV industry, in, yeah. you know, to what it is today. So mm-hmm. I think just be careful, like, cause you know, when it does fall, it's not going to be pretty. Yeah. How do you avoid, I don't want to say Tesla is a bad company because they're not, no, it's I don't want to, you know, no. but how do you avoid bad companies? Like what, what would you say are some of the red flags that you should look Bad for? companies. So mm-hmm. they don't make money. Mm-hmm. They don't have cash flow. Mm-hmm. Poor fundamentals. Mm-hmm. I don't invest in SPACs. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, SPACs have disappeared. Yeah. yeah so, nobody talks um, about them anymore. Yeah. If they're overvalued, okay, that's a bad overvalued. company to me. Okay. So if, for me, yeah if yes that's it really like it's okay. easy to tell a bad company like mm. from a good company okay yeah no that's great no it's been it's been good having this chat i hope we can uh, have more frequent chats we'll see we'll see we'll, yeah. we'll work something out because this has been very interesting mm. and i think what i love about investing is that you can constantly learn a lot yeah i like the fact that you said that um that you just sold your whole portfolio and yeah. you're you're starting you started afresh which yeah. is which is good because i think as an investor you always have to check your biases yeah. and introspect which is very important and i think for me as well i have i started investing i think like feb maybe jan feb yeah. because i had to say for my wedding yeah. and it allowed me to at one point i was looking at the market every day like (laughs) you go crazy right and then allow me to get out like even when you're telling me prices Mm -hmm. if you told me that if we were discussing in jan feb i would have known now i don't know anything i think that's how Mm -hmm. it it should be as an investor you shouldn't be going crazy um about prices not like in in a bad way Mm -hmm. i mean like you shouldn't be going crazy like if you've 
value that a certain price and it's it's good you're happy and it's at that price and you invested mm. and it goes down below that you shouldn't start getting stressed about it no, you should love because, it exactly yeah. um so yeah no um it's been good for me i think taking a break from it because even me i'm thinking okay how do i change the approach how do i improve how do i get better mm. right now that i've got the time and now i've got the time to actually yeah. oh and at the same time it's convenient because a lot of stuff will come down so i'm yeah. like okay cool this is great. So yeah, no, it's it's super important as an investor to continuously just educate yourself. Yeah. What books would you recommend actually um, uh, that you've you've looked at yourself that have helped you um, become a better so investor? So books that I normally recommend, you know, mm. beginners. So to start off, Psychology of Money, just to okay. get you in a mindset. Yeah. Then um, Richer, Wiser, Happier. Okay. So that's on my list. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a good book. Um, yeah. Also, um, Intelligent Investor is pretty good. Yeah. Um, um, rule one investing that's another one okay. as well um there's also i also like this one uh, um financial behavior something it's by parag parik okay he's an indian value investor okay it's i think a, i've heard of so it. if you yeah, type in yeah. parag parik on yeah on like google amazon mm -hmm. all his books will come down okay so yeah there's a few you know good books but the main one you want to start off with mm -hmm. is psychology of money mm -hmm. um richer wiser happier mm -hmm. and also there's another one um um little book that beats the market that's okay. another good one simplifies okay. value investing yeah. for you and there's also the acquires multiple okay which is like richer wiser app um happier mm -hmm. like, which is which is like um little book that beats the market but okay. it's a slightly different way okay but yeah those are the main books that you beginners should start to okay read. wow that's good that, yeah. those are those are good they sound like some good books yeah um richer wiser happier is on my list that's yeah. been on my list for a while mm -hmm. um intelligent investor of course that's like the yeah. that's like the godfather of i would read that so. first though like, yeah, yeah it's complicated but it's definitely on the list yeah. at some point yeah. yeah um that's good um final question before we sort of get towards them what do you think because it doesn't seem like you invest in index funds or etfs wow is there a reason for that um, at the beginning, I actually had a little bit of index fund okay. that, you know, um, I actually think that if you're coming into the market, mm. you should, you know, index, invest in index fund. Mm -hmm. And if you want to challenge yourself, mm -hmm. if you think you can do better than the market, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, look at individual stocks, mm -hmm. learn it, how to do it properly. And mm -hmm. then what I did was slightly tilt it. So I'd have less index fund and more individual stocks. Okay. okay. And eventually I was completely out of index fund. Okay. And more in 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 an index um in individual stock okay okay yeah cool i mean you're studying you're working hard on it i mean <laughs> yeah. i see your post so yeah. you go in depth so mm -hmm. and i think that's what it takes right you have to to yeah. be willing to to go in depth but i think once you you go in depth for the first time of course you have to maintain maintain that yeah. but it's so weird because when you learn so much about a company like the amount of information you can consume you, mm. you just know more and more about that company yeah as time goes on so yeah no it's very very interesting um thanks so much for um you know blessing the podcast um what do you have next um next yeah what's next for where's what's the what's the next post do you have a do you have a next um so my next post is how to spot uh how the, how to spot how the market has gone euphoric so how okay to spot bubbles okay then i probably got another stock analysis um i'm not sure which company maybe okay. warner bros media man you holding okay i'm not sure but yeah just continue the same really okay cool no yeah. it's been good um you have any final actually before that yeah. where can they find you okay yeah. so you can find me on instagram mm -hmm. at investing with wes mm -hmm. and yeah that's where I'm okay that's where you're at the yeah. moment yeah yeah okay yeah. cool and um final words for the listeners um, you know, if you're new to the market, mm -hmm. just take your time, continue to learn, you mm -hmm. know, read a lot, you know, um, always, you know, surround yourself with good, good, like minded investors and mm -hmm. yeah, just, and just enjoy the, the long road really. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long road yeah. indeed. Um, yeah. We just want to be clear that mm -hmm. of course this episode is not financial advice. I'll see if I put, put disclaimer at the beginning. Um, but yeah, also investing is a long-term thing. Um, you have to get yourself into the long-term mindset. It's not about <laughs> investing and trading is different. Let's yeah. just put it like that, right? Trading, they they think short-term, they want to get return in one day, two days, a yeah. week, one month, whatever it is for them. But long for, for investing long-term, I know we typically say five years, yeah. but really should be looking 10, 15, 20 years yeah. horizon. Some people don't even sell. They just pass it on to their grandkids. I saw yeah. some 
it was like I think it was about a year ago. Some um, somebody inherited like Apple shares from like their their grandparent that passed away. Yeah, it sell. <laughs> That's what <laughs> yeah. generational wealth, right? It just yeah. keep passing it down and down and down. Mm. I mean, even like the Nike uh, founder, he's doing a similar thing with Nike shares, but yeah. he's doing it in like this whole trust thing. He's, he's yeah. like, they're going crazy with it. So they ha- he has no intention mm. of selling. That's just something that would just be passed on just to keep money in the family for yeah. for life. So yeah, no, super, super interesting. It's been great having you yeah. on on uh, the podcast. We'll definitely want to um, have you on for another episode. Listeners, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the podcast. Thanks for listening to this episode and we'll see you next week.